Hey Floss Tube, uh, this is Becky, the South Texas teacher. I'm excited. I have another new subscriber today, so I'm glad about that. I don't have a whole bunch yet, but everybody counts. Everybody always counts. It doesn't matter who you are. You, you count, trust me. And it's good to know that at least a few people are interested in what I have to say, other than my family, I guess. But um, I've got a few things here I wanted to show you. I actually filmed yesterday and um, I had my cam my my camera set up on a uh, on a box, and I was using my uh, cookbook stand to uh, to hold it. And my cookbook stand has these two chains with little balls on it to lay against your pages to keep the pages open. And I didn't realize that every time I was bumping the table, all you could hear was tick 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 tick. And I was listening to the video before I got ready to post it, and I kept going, "What is that noise?" And I realized, uh oh, it's, it's the little teeny chains. And because I was sitting against my dining room table, I kept bumping it. And throughout the whole video, all you could hear is tick, 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 tick. And I figured, oh no, that's gotta go. So I decided to just scrap the whole thing and start over from scratch. Which is probably good because I probably got a little ramble yesterday. Um, I did, was going to film last Friday and didn't get to um, last weekend or last Friday Memorial Day weekend um, I get this text message from my brother and he says um, taking mama to the ER heart, heart attack and I was like oh gosh and because you know you can't go to the hospital right now no one could go up there with her and uh, so she was in from Friday until Monday, Memorial Day itself, and um, she did have a small heart attack. This is her second one. She had one, in fact, they said it was a year and a week from the last one she had. Uh, last year she had her first one. And um, I was like, no, we're not doing this. I, we already had one funeral this year for a parent. I don't need a second one. Luckily, um, we, uh, uh, we're able to, we weren't able to go see her once she got in there no one could be with her but we were able to keep contact with her uh, by cell phone and stuff my mother still uses a flip phone she refuses to use her iPhone because she says she can't feel the glass she has to have a button to push she also won't use a computer so once a week or so I go over to her house open up the computer go through her email show her anything that she wants um, all her grandchildren and nieces and nephews are still sending her pictures. Cause see, my dad used to do all that for her. They're still sending her the pictures. And I think it's funny because now the email will start, Becky, show this to mom or Becky, show this, right, right, Becky, show this to grandma or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, y'all know she's, she's going to get her picture sooner or later, but uh, she is good. She's fine. These heart attacks she's having are very mild. So, it's no surgery or anything. They just monitor her for the next two or three days. And they're like, she had a heart attack. It was so mild though. She can go home. They're just, you know, take it easy. And since right now everybody's kind of in a sedentary state anyway, we're, we're good. Um, I have some FFOs. Well, two FFOs and two, they're this close to being an FFO. Um, here in San Antonio, we have a company, well, I think she lives in San Antonio, or she lives near San Antonio. We have a designer her uh, under Redbird Designs. Uh, I know you can get the patterns at the LNS in San Antonio, and you can get the patterns at uh, Three Stitches in Spring, Texas, which is near Houston. Um, I don't know if she's in any of the Dallas stores. She may be up there. But she's got a new series for this this uh, year, and it's um, what is that? Anyway, it's a uh, it's a uh, just a monthly picture she's doing. One year she did the twelve days of Christmas, and it, she passed you know did those through the year. But my patterns, I have all the I have all twelve patterns, but I never stitched them, and I keep meaning to. And I, well, I have to admit, I'm torn. I don't know if I want to make twelve ornaments for the twelve days of Christmas. Or make a wall hanging because they're not big so you could very easily make a, a small wall hanging 
but this is January for this year and I put little pom-poms around him to give him the look of snowballs and because it's Redbird Designs each month we'll have a Redbird and uh, you can probably see that there's something on the fabric right there this this fabric screamed snow because of the, it's you know it's uh, it's got snowflakes on it and stuff but this pattern this fabric was originally Christmas and I did my best to cut everything out without a Santa on it except for that little bitty corner so I put bigger snowballs down there but I finished them off with a big washer and I'm going to put them on a board that looks like the Texas flag um, I have to paint the Texas flag first I have the star and I have this board I started to paint this and I was doing very well and thought I'll paint the whole thing in white and then do the blue and the red and then glue the star on and I because it was a ticky tacky um, little Easter holdover at our grocery store for decorations and since nobody really got to go buy all their stuff this year because no one could get into the stores and stuff Easter all their Easter stuff basically went from full price to next to nothing real quick and it originally had a bunny on it and I thought that's the perfect size someday when I'll get it and I'll just stick it right there and then from here up will be blue with the star but anyway I started to paint it. I was going to paint it all white and then do the red and then the blue and then glue the star on. And I painted it and I said, hmm, I don't guess I'm going to have to put a second coat on. When all of a sudden I realized it started bubbling. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, I thought that was a better board. And that's when I realized the bunny was a piece of paper that was glued on to here or however they stuck it. And when I went like that, the bunny and the paint just all peeled off. And I just haven't been gung-ho enough to break out my little hand sander and gun and take it all off. But this is going to be a Texas flag. And in January, this will be there. This is January. I have finished. Good grief, there's cat hair on this. I thought I had kept him away. Anyway, this is February. And what I like about February is the fact that this little lace with those little hearts that belonged to my grandmother when she passed away all her sewing stuff and she had a lot I thought, I thought I wasn't taping it for a second she had a lot just she was a sewer she, she was a seamstress she she crocheted she did embroidery um, she tried knitting she didn't like knitting um, but she was an excellent uh, person to do all that. And um, I just, I, I kept all her stuff. Well, every so often when my little, my daughters were little girls, I would pull some of that lace out or something and I would just go and add it to their dresses. Well, I still have lace because she just had that much. And um, when I was finishing this, I was thinking, this needs a little piece of lace. Well, when I went and dug through the lace that I had from her, the little heart showed up and I went, oh, that is perfect for Valentine's Day. And this little envelope, this is a button, and the fabric I found, let's see if you can see, you really can't see it too much, I'm gonna put the lace on. It's little envelopes, little Valentine envelopes. And I thought that was just perfect. So that's that's February. So January and February are FFO, they're done. I, I considered putting a little red bow on February, but I thought, nah, that'll be too much. Uh, I have, and then the two that are almost done are March, and I laughed because everybody was saying they didn't understand why you were calling it March. I said, well, there's a shamrock where the star should be, and I thought it was funny because everybody who was working on it said, you know, I never paid attention to the fact that there was a shamrock and not a star, but there's March. And then April is the cardinal sitting on top of an Easter basket with a little, right there, a little teeny ladybug button that goes on top of the basket. This fabric is Easter eggs. I have had this since 
the early 1990, mid 1990s. Um, my husband was a full time pastor for many years, and uh, when uh, he was doing things, every so often he would tell me, he goes, "I really wish I could get a seasonal tie," and uh, I told him, I said, "Well, you know, go to Dillard's and buy one." He says, it "Like he goes." The seasonal ties at Dillard's are like $75 to $100. And I was thinking to myself, you're not looking at the right Dillard's. And then he tells me, you so, just make me a tie. And I went, oh yeah, sure. So I went and found a pattern, bought all the stuff, and made a tie. So he had an Easter egg tie. He wore his, his Easter egg tie with his black suit, and he was very popped. <laughs> but that's how old that fabric is. And... This one was just a little piece that I found at the quilt store. Um, the um, uh, fabric itself kind of looks like it had shamrocks on it when you can see more of it. But once I put the uh, stitched piece on there, I'm going to, of course, rim these with something. But I haven't decided why yet, especially the shamrock one. I just, nothing is coming to mind. I mean, I thought about just doing simple ribbons on the Easter one. But, um... I just can't find the what I want. So we'll see how that goes. Then, uh, this is Mania. And uh, I have been finishing, or not, haha, ha, finishing. Ha, been working on the grandchildren's stockings. And this is the one I was working on this week. This one, I started off, well, let me, let me first say. When I started all these off, I had purchased a big piece of 28 count Laguna. I was going to do three of them on that because one I already had started on navy blue. And then another one needed a second piece of navy blue. And I was good with that. Three on white, two on the navy, be perfect. A brother and sister are getting the navy blue ones. I thought that'd be great. So I started to do the uh, one of the... Um, uh, what you caught my brain to shut down one of the stockings that has a nutcracker on it and I was looking at it and realized I couldn't do that because the guy's hair was wrong so I bought a piece another piece of fabric which I showed last video uh, it was under the sea sulky then I got ready and then I had started the first stocking I did I went ahead and started an Aida because it matches the one I had done for my daughter back in the 80s, or excuse me, 90s, took me 12, 15 years to finish it. I don't remember if I gave it to her on her 12th birthday or her 15th birthday, but it was it was a long time in stitching. So I decided, no, I wanted to go ahead and make a match. So I went ahead and got um, Aida to do the other uh, stocking on. Then, what did my boy? So then I got ready to stitch the one starting last Friday and realized I had this huge, beautiful piece of Laguna. And I went, I cannot cut a small piece out of this and have it just be destroyed. It, it My soul went, no, you can't do this. <laughs> so, shucks, had to go to the cross stitch store again. And uh, I came back with a different piece of fabric it says this is for my grand my youngest granddaughter i picked up this is called ophelia and it's also by the under the sea fabric and it's pink with a little bit of yellow throughout it every so often and i don't know if you can see it but it's also opalescent so it has some sparkle to it uh, i'm using the window as my light because it's a better light than anything else that i have right now so i've been stitching on that this week and this is how much I got done. This is the toe. Yes, I have that right side. Do I have that right side up? But yes, I do. Um, let me see. I've been working on that all week long, off and on, um, being distracted by what my mother was going through. We all told her, no, 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 no. She can't do this. And this is not allowed to become an annual thing. So here is the piece that I stitched. There is the pattern. I was doing the toe of the, sh of the boot there. 
and uh, wanted to definitely make sure I got the uh, the back stitching on there. I remember getting candies like that when I was little in the uh, in my Christmas stocking because the uh, that was back when they used to do like the um, the white wax the white wax paper that would twist well and you'd get taffy and things in it like that. Now I have to admit I'm not a big fan of taffy, and so I didn't eat a lot of it. But I remember getting taffy and candy like that. And uh, I was always, you know, well, it was Christmas. Everybody was excited at Christmas to get candy. Because my mother was one of those people, Halloween and Christmas and Valentine's, you may get candy, but that does not mean you can sit there and eat it all. She, you would be allowed two pieces of candy a day from your Halloween bag. So Halloween came back candy for us lasted until Christmas. Christmas candy lasted us until February for Valentine's Day, and then Valentine's Day, you didn't get as much. Oh, and it would end before Easter. And then when Easter came, you got you got to do the, the two pieces again in Easter. So, you just, you know, it depended on how much you got. Uh, I remember one Easter when we were in Europe, I got this really cute little bucket thingy. Um, it was about that big, and on top, it had a little two little bunnies and if you push this button the bunnies would hop not a lot but just they would hop they were cute and the bucket part of it was nothing but jelly beans well we were allowed to have if it was jelly bean type candy you were allowed to have like five pieces and that counted as one and that was it my mother would sit there when we were little and she would open up one of the little bag of M&Ms and she would divide it up among us and we'd all get like three or four M&Ms. So it was annoying. <laughs> so when I got older, I was like, I'm not doing that to my children. So, and I didn't. But my daughter did get, one of my youngest daughter did get super sick eating nothing but hot tamales and Sprite when she went to college. And now she can't eat them that much. I was like, ha ha, I told you not to eat them like that. Anyway, I digress. So anyway, I remember getting candies that were wrapped like that and I enjoyed it. The stocking that I was supposed to have done a video for last week and I didn't get a chance to was this one. This is the toe of Dash Away All and I got very tired of stitching snow. I mean, really, it was like, oh, come on. Is there anything else to stitch other than snow? And then that's what it is. This part here, oops, there we go. This part here. I got from that tree, let me open this up, they put the pattern on part of the back. So I went from here to here and I was working on the roofs here when the, uh, when the week ended and I was like, oh thank God, no more snow for a little bit. I think I'll probably pick these up again in July for Christmas in July stitching. Um, Sometimes I'll do Christmas ornaments in July, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do any ornaments this year since I'm working on the stockings. Um, they'll take up a lot of time. So today is the day, the last stocking to, to, to work on. And because I had already started on this one, I don't feel, I don't feel that uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, the shortened section of this part of the month because today's the 29th. So 29, 30, 31. I don't feel bad about only doing three days on this one because this one I had actually already started. And this is on Blue Laguna. And this is for my oldest granddaughter. And because she's more mature than the others, I didn't think I needed to do Aida for her. But this is gonna be done with 111, 111 DMC variegated. And it's nothing but ornaments. The pattern itself looks like um, it, it's done on black and it's using gold and browns and there's some beads. But I decided that I wanted, I think that part was right there. I decided to do it on the navy and using the 111 because I decided 111 would give me that look without having to continually change out this gold to this gold to this gold to a darker brown or something like that. And there are beads on this. And I was, 
<laughs> so funny. I, was, I had taken this with me to my LNS and I was going to buy the stuff and I went, hey, why does this say they have the beads? And I started looking and said, oh yeah, there are beads on that. So I do have some of the gold beads to go with that. So that one is going to be stitched on, start, or it's already started, but it'll be stitched on today. And then the others will go into the stash of God knows when they'll be finished. As I, and I'm hoping to have this, and everybody laughs, I said, I'm hoping to have this done by the time they are at least 20. And since my youngest granddaughter is two, I have at least 18 years to work on that. Then I did get some haul because, of course, when I went to the Illinois to get the fabric, I had to pick up stuff. And then I went to uh, the LNS in Comfort, Texas, which is called uh, the Tinsmith's Wife. She's also a, um, a yarn and needlepoint store. And uh, she's fantastic. It's one of those deals where I almost wanted to take a chair and just sit and stick the book because she has got stacks of things. Anyway, so my haul, this is from yesterday. I'm trying to remember what I do with my stuff from with Ophelia, because I know I bought stuff. Oh, yes, I know what I do with the Ophelia stuff, yes. Anyway, this is from yesterday, from my LNS in San Antonio, from Stitches in the Heart. This is May, to go with the others. And because this one is kind of generic, um, and it's not, I was expecting maybe a little flag or something for Memorial Day, but there's not. So I figured this one, when I finish this, I can put this out more than just May and um, be ready. And this one also has one of those little button birds and, uh, had, and, and because I had them kitted up and these are so small, they just sell you, they, they break up the yardage of the, uh, uh, of the uh, classic color works and weak style works. It's, Blueberry tart and cappuccino that you need extra for those. So that was from yesterday. And then last week, when I picked up the Ophelia, which is, as I said, the under the sea 28 count Aida, this is what I picked up last week from my LNS the hands on design um, Memorial Day. I showed this to my mom and she said she would only do the middle flag and I said well they're just gonna throw off everything else and she says no she wasn't doing everything else she just wanted to do the flag and I was like whatever I don't have the sulkies I have ordered them um, I have never used the sulkies I have a question anybody who has um, what is the best count for coverage I understand that this is says that the sulky say that it's one one thread equals two DMC but some of the people who show their their work on uh, YouTube, I, I don't think it gives a good coverage. And I was just wondering if anybody had an opinion of if the, uh, instead of a 28 or a 32, if I should look at the 36s in higher counts to do this. But I really want to do this. I was thinking about it. I have several pieces of um, patriotic uh, stuff, but I've never stitched any of them and you would think that in my family because we're at least four generations of United States Air Force that I would have stitched patriotic things on occasion and I haven't I have the patterns I buy them and I think to myself oh it's patriotic I'm gonna do this and I have never done it and I don't know why so this is definitely one I'm gonna do I also have I don't know if you remember the pattern I have to dig it out and show it on the next pattern the next one uh, it's a bent creek and it's a long flag and it's got the alphabet and it's pulled out the G, the L, the O, the R, and the Y because they're in order and they say glory. I started that, that was the first piece I was had worked with, uh, Overdyke Floss and nobody told me that it's each stitch is individual versus what do they call it, the, the, the row stitching or whatever, they, I forget what they call it, I know there's a name. And uh, and then I I didn't know that and it wasn't coming out right and it looked bad and so I haven't done that much of it because I was like unhappy and I tossed it to one side and then I went someplace and somebody said something about stitching them individually and I went duh okay that makes sense and I have to admit I had never really used variegated thread um, at least not like that anyway the second thing I bought excuse me was I love this. 
the uh, quarantine project, Let's Stay Home and Stitch. Um, I showed this to my mom also because I, I had them open with me. And she didn't notice that this one has scissors and this one has a needle. And because I told her, I said, I love the scissors in this. And she's like, what scissors? I said, they're right there. And she goes, like, oh, yeah. So, I love this. I may stitch this one. I may stitch twice because my mom liked it. And I may make her one. Maybe. Ha, ha, ha. We'll see. The, um, I just haven't decided what I'm going to put on this yet. Then yesterday when I went to the new LNS, or not new LNS, but to the LN, I don't really go to Comfort very often. It's a bit of a drive. Well, it's a beautiful drive. It's a great drive to get there from San Antonio, but they're working on the highway and it's taking your life into your own hands to go that way. I could have gone the back road. I came home the back road, which was great because this, the day was beautiful. There was fluffy clouds, of course, then the fluffy clouds turn into some nastiness later on. But uh, we've had a lot of rain, a lot of uh, flooding, lightning. We've had power outages. It has been crazy here in the last couple of days. Right, Starting right after Memorial Day, it just all digressed quickly. So yesterday when I was at um, the Tinsmith's Wife in Comfort, Texas, I came across the uh, the the colors I needed if I was going to do Teresa Koga's Newcastle bouquet in overdyes. Because originally I was just going to do the DMC because everybody is sold out, even online and at the LNSs because they're they're just not there. Well, the Tin Smith's wife, when I went in there, she had the colors, and at first I was like. Well, I already bought the DMC. I don't need to buy these. I'm not going to do it. But such is life. I couldn't resist. And I went ahead and bought the colors for the Newcastle bouquet. And I just think this is beautiful. And I'm going to go and hold them against, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to go and hold them against the DMC because there's not a lot of over dye in these colors. There's not a lot of variegation. And so I'm considering, I don't know, I may just save these and still go ahead and use the DMC for the uh, uh, Newcastle bouquet, but I have the colors now. And so I was excited to know that. I'm going to pause here just a moment. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I was having to move the cat and stuff because, and, and I was starting to have a, an avalanche here and the cat was looking at me like I'm going to jump in front of everything and make your life miserable again. So yesterday, one of the other things I found was, um, I don't really stitch things for my husband because most things I find I like to stitch on are kind of feminine and he is not a person who would want anything like that. So I found this, he loves wolves and this wolf, just screamed his name when I saw it. I had seen it online, but I had not really looked at it because it's hard, you know, even now it's just a lot of grays and stuff. But when I picked up the pattern, was looking at it closer and I was like, you know what? That wolf, and then I realized he's not that big. And I realized, cause he is, 93 by 185 so he's not that big in comparison to other things that I have stitched. He's not that big So I'm looking forward. Excuse me. Excuse the tail as he flashes through um, I'm looking forward to stitching the wool and this fabric is the Bolin fabric from primitive hair and They had a piece of it I need to still do the ends. They had a piece of this fabric to stitch it on. And um, I just think it's fantastic. And um, I have looked at it for a while, but I was always like, I don't know what I would put on there because uh, originally there was pictures of bunnies and other things and I knew he definitely wouldn't want a bunny. So I was very pleased when I found the, uh, the wolf. Let me do this for a second. And then 
Most of the wolf is DMC. It's all the DMC grays in it. But the border and the uh, the word lupus. Yes, lupus wolf are in these colors. These are Gentle Arts, Garden Gate, and Pecan Pie. And the rest of it was DMC, and I haven't pulled them yet because I know I have those grays in my stash. But these two I didn't have. And I was like, well, if I'm going to do him like he's supposed to be on this fabric because I, I wouldn't want to change anything on him. I mean, it's a gray wolf. I mean, why change anything? So I, I, I did buy that. I was very pleased with um, uh, finding all this. I hadn't meant to spend that much money. I originally went all the way to Comfort, Texas, which from my house is about a good hour and a half away, just for these. My LNS been sold out of this size for a while now. They're very popular, so when they come in, they're gone. And um, I was like, I want some Q-snaps. I have purchased the ones from Hobby Lobby. I don't like the ones from Hobby Lobby. Uh, one of their from Yarnology or something like that. I don't like them. They don't clamp well. And I know I've seen people put uh, very thin quilt batting in there to help with the clamping, but I shouldn't have to do that. I mean, really, it should be well enough that when you put that thing on there, it should be tight. And my uh, last set of Q-snaps, I had used quite a bit until finally the um, the little clampy part of the Q-snap. I don't know what you call that, the over clamp or whatever. It just finally died. I mean, it gave up the ghost. There, it, it cracked and fell apart. In my, I mean, I was putting it on one night and it went crack and fell apart in my hand. And I went, oh, it's time to get some Q-snaps. I do have some bigger ones, the 11 by 17s, and I have some 8 by 8s. But I wanted, but I didn't have, I had one set of the 11 by 17s. If I had, had two sets of 11 by 17s, I could have just made it 11 by 11, because that's my favorite size. But I just didn't have two sets. I had uh, through, through sets dying and stuff, I was down to, I could do a 17 by 17, but I was down to just the two sides for an 11 by 11, so I needed to buy some more. So I was pleased that I found those. That was the only pattern. I'm looking to see if I dropped anything. Um, that was the only pattern I bought from um, the Tinsmith's wife. They were in comfort. So today through Sunday, I'll be stitching on the, um, the next blue Christmas stocking. And then June 1st, when it hits here, that was when I can finally start something other than Christmas. And I'm really looking forward to starting something other than Christmas. So, this is what I'm going to be stitch starting June 1st. The Hunter Gatherer. I do have all the stuff for this. Um, this is also for my husband. I hadn't, when I bought the wolf, I wasn't even thinking about the fact that I had actually bought something else for him. Excuse me. It's my foot. <laughs> Making me a little crazy there. What are you doing? So anyway, I'm going to start the Hunter Gatherer on June 1st. And then also in June, I can go back to working on my stitch along. And this is on a Facebook stitch along for the Unicorn Tapestry. I had somebody ask me about this because they had not seen it. This was a market exclusive. And I got this from Stitches and Things out of Michigan. Um, there was not a lot of copies of these, so I don't know if you could find it still. But I have started it. I started this in April, just before um, Mania started. So I have started it. There's the edge in the beginning of the gate, the garden gate for the unicorns where they stand. I always start at the bottom left corner and go up. So I usually will have extra over here and across the top. Um, it's, I, I just, I don't know, I just have to start on the left-hand corner. Somebody the other day was on YouTube, and I don't remember who it was, said they always start bottom right corner and, and work, and they work out like that, and I work this way. And then, of course, you got the people who 
you know, when, only want to start in the middle. I am working on, well, let me rephrase that. I have started the, the uh, oops, I forgot to put the pattern back in there. The uh, stitch along for from Linens and Threads in Australia for 2020, because it's a Quaker sampler. And um, there were people who were upset because they couldn't start in the middle. And they wanted to start. And to start in that upper left-hand corner, is they were just distraught about it. And I was like, it's good. As long as you get a piece of fabric that's going to fit, you know, you're good. But for some reason, they just were upset. Excuse me. They were just upset that they could not um, get that uh, centerpiece to start with. Which, in my opinion, it, it would be hard to do for a stitch along that's going to be little boxes each month. I mean, and not everybody likes to start in the center. I know I don't. I have started in the center. If the project is a perfect square or a circle, that way I know I have everything correctly. And because uh, I have a, um, I did the Celtic medallion from Vickery Collection, and it is round. And when you're finished with it, it comes out round, but it's a 12 by 12 piece of fabric you need. Or at least that's the size of fabric I was using. And uh, I, I, when I was doing that, when I started in the middle and worked around, which was funny because I was starting in the middle, which I don't usually do, but I had started and I opened up a can of Coke. And I always open up sodas over here if I'm stitching. I went pop on that top and a splash of coat came up out of the can, made an arc, and landed on the fabric right next to where I had been stitching. And I was like, oh! And Coca-Cola doesn't always come out. And that little brown stain was there for a while until I was got further along in the stitching and then realized, well, this would be great. The dragon's head is right over the coat, so we're good to go. So I just stitched over that spot. Um, two more things. I found in my garage, in a box, and I don't know how old it is, a piece of what used to be white Aida. It was nasty looking, and I don't know where it had come from or what it had been doing, but it had a big stain on it, and it looked bad, and it smelled. And nothing else in the box had been damaged. There was no watermarks on anything else, but this one piece of Aida had this big stain on it, like it had been water damaged. And I don't know where it came from. Because I had given all my stuff away quite a while, all my Aida away, because I was only using linen. But when I started looking for uh, uh, bric-a-brac and things like that for finishing, and I uh, was pulling, and I, I had bought a little box from uh, Joanne's to put all the lace in, because I had lace tucked everywhere. I was It was crazy. So I decided, well, um, let me just go through everything. So when I'm going through all my boxes of fabric, and uh, I found this piece of Aida, and it was, as I said, it was nasty. It smelled, had a big yellow stain on it. It looked like it had been in a cardboard box, and the cardboard box had gotten wet, and it had leaked some of the color onto it. Well, the other day, about two or three weeks ago now, I have watched two different videos on tea dyeing, um, I think Kia B's, and I don't remember who the other person was. But anyway, I, I had watched some tea dye. I had never done it, and I think my daughter has, but I had never done it. So last night I decided, you know what, that piece of Aida, I'm gonna play with it. I'll do. So, I'll try tea dyeing for the first time. <laughs> Let's all laugh now. So I put a big pot of water on the back of my stove because it was it was stiff it was so stiff I couldn't break it down to fold it into the water so I used to use my big kettle and I had some tea bags that uh, they were an off-brand and usually we just use the Lipton decaf but this was an off-brand of tea I don't know when we got it and it has been sitting in the bottom of my Tupperware container every time I get close to it, it was like oh I don't want to use that go buy more Lipton and um so I thought that is a perfect excuse to get rid of some of that tea. So I put a big pot of water on the stove and I think I threw about 
eight of those bags into the bottom of it and put it on the stove to boil and I thought you know what this thing stinks I'm just gonna put the fabric in there and it can boil clean with the tea well I was fixing dinner my husband thought it was for dinner I said no 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 that's fabric and he looked at me he was like it's what I said no don't eat that that's fabric I said dinner's over here that's fabric and um so I was letting it steep. I had turned it off and was just letting it sit for a little bit to die and um, cleaned up everything and forgot about it. And so this morning when I got up, I went, oh, the pot is still on the stove with the fabric in it. So I took it out and stuck it in the oven like you're supposed to. And um, I didn't have it up high enough. And so it didn't really heat it. It, it just made it hot. It made it a hot piece of fabric instead of setting it so I turned went and did it again and said turn it up higher and cooked it so I came out with it because it's soaked overnight it is dark and this is I'm gonna screen here this is what I came up with for tea dyeing for the first time I don't know what I'm gonna do with it a couple places are still damp but it looks interesting so I have to decide what I'm going to do with this now. Um, let's see if you can see it. Do you see that ovally loop right there? It comes down and goes back up. I have that in a couple of places on here. Oh, that one shows better. That is the stain that was on it in the box that I found it in. And as I said, I don't know what that is. And it's a perfect loop. In both of those places, hold it up a little bit, and it's still on there. So I don't know what it is. I'm gonna leave it. Um, well, gotta leave it now because it's done. But I don't know what I'm gonna stitch on this piece. It's a big piece, and uh, who knows? Maybe it'll be another stocking someday. <laughs> I do know all my children have informed me there'll be no more grandchildren. The five that I have are the five that I have, and that's it. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's, it's just crazy. Anyway, I have some tea dye. I'm going to put a video at the end of my uh, newest acquisition. Um, when I was at Tinsmith's Wife the other day, I was uh, looking around, and they had a... Um, stand a stitching stand there and I was just like wow wonder how much that thing costs because I know they're expensive and I had been meaning wanting to get one but I didn't want to shell out three to four hundred dollars and uh, the ones that were less than that I can't use because they want to slide under your chair this way like a Lowry stand and I sit at a glider to stitch so I can't there's nothing to there's no space to slide underneath there so it has to have something that comes this way and I, I know on those big metal the big metal pad ones I didn't want something like that tilting at me because I didn't want it to fall on me and crush me because it would I'm that kind of person that if it's gonna fall on you and hurt you with all those little metal sticky things the little twisty things they have on it I'd be the one to end up at the ER with it having gone through my arm or my eye or something like that. So as much as I like the idea of a Lowry stand, it just wasn't going to work for me. I need something that comes around my chair. So when I was there, they had this stand, and at the time I didn't even pay attention to what brand it was, it was but it could tell that it went around the chair versus under the chair. And I was looking at it going, ooh, that's what I really need. and. Uh, so I went to the register to pay for my stuff, and I said, by the way, how much is the stand? And uh, they laughed, and she says, well, it's a second-hand stand, and what's funny is the lady who owns it just brought it in, and she's right there. Well, the lady who just brought it in is a friend of mine from the other LNS here in San Antonio. So I said, oh, and she says, well, why don't you make her an offer? And I said, well, what do you want for it? And so she told me. And I'm not going to tell you how much. And um, I was I told her, I said, sold. I'll buy it. Because it was not going to be three to $400. So I paid for it. 
loaded it up into my truck and brought it home. Excuse me, my nose went stitch. And Wednesday is when I bought it. So Wednesday I got it all set up, started to stitch. I had made five half stitches. I was about ready to come back like this when the power went out and the house was pitch black and so I could no longer stitch. So yesterday, sat down, did a whole bunch of stitching and I was so excited because since it's, it's on, the, on a scroll rod, and I have scroll rods, I just don't have a stand. So on that stand, when I was finishing, because I wasn't having to hold a frame in my left hand, I stitched a lot longer than I normally can because my hands were not cramping. I have um, some arthritis and they, in my hands and holding those frames just kills me. And um, I still love a Q-snap. And I'm gonna look to see if maybe they have an adapter for the, for, for the stand to hold Q-snaps. But right now I'm gonna be able to put everything on, uh, put it on the, uh, the scroll rods to stitch on because it was so nice to be able to stitch. And I can stitch two-handed. I, 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 I just, something naturally I can do. So I can stitch two-handed. So it, the stitching was going faster for me. And I was so pleased because when I finished stitching, and I think I stitched for four, three, four hours yesterday, when I finished, my hands were not screaming at me. And it was so nice because by the time, usually if I stitch for longer than 45 minutes, usually when I have to hold a frame, my left hand is screaming at me and, and it actually will swell up and it just looks, I have to take rings off and it's just not a pleasant feeling. So I was very pleased to have the stand. It's, it's going to make my life easier. It made me actually be able to finish a thing. Now, of course, little pieces will still be on hoops and stuff, but little pieces, you can stitch for 30 to 45 minutes and you, no big deal. If I use a wooden hoop, those I can hold on to longer. But a wooden hoop I have discovered here lately is the, um, um, what you call it, the tension on them. I don't know what it is. I, I know, excuse me, my nose won't stop itching today. I know the old hoops that I used to use when I was younger and the ones that my grandmother used because we would sit there and do pillowcases together. Um, I never had a problem with the tension on those unless I just pushed down with a needle. The new ones, they, when you put the two, when you put the inner ring and the outer ring together and you go like that, I mean, you can see daylight and it doesn't matter how tight you try to get it. It doesn't stay tight. It went, it keeps wanting to just fall right through. And I have tried and tried and tried and I, they just, I start me stitching and within 10 minutes I'm having to stop, retighten it, start over again. And that's annoying. Uh, a small piece, because it does go so much faster, I'm not so much worried about that. It's just, it's just strange how, I, and I think it's the fact that, that they're bamboo. I know that when I was younger, they were not bamboo. I think they were balsa wood. I have even seen some that were made out of oak. And um, those, those are a tad expensive and I can't afford those, but yeah, the bamboo ones that they're making nowadays, I really don't care for. And I have purchased some here lately because I was trying to, since I can't stitch longer holding those, I was buying some of those since I couldn't replace my Q-snaps. But the t amount of time I'm have sitting, spending, sitting there going in and out, changing up for tension, uh, it's not worth it to me. So anyway... That's what I have for new. That's what I have stitched. That's what I'm going to stitch. And I'm just so glad that I have actually some FFOs to show you this time. Um, there's no ticking on this video, so I'm glad about that. Because um, I've been listening. I have, I'm have. i still having to use my baker stand, cook, cookbook stand. But I have the uh, chains and the, the rings away from the metal rack. So it doesn't do the tick, 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 tick anymore. Um, we have been having some bad storms here in San Antonio. Uh, my husband's been having to go out. He's been doing 12-hour uh, days for COVID and then having to turn around and go out in the night for um, storms. 
not a good situation. Uh, San Antonio, we call them low water crossings, and that means the water comes up high. Other states call them high water crossings, but in San Antonio and the surrounding area in Texas, we call them low water crossings. Please be careful. Um, if the water is up, don't drive through them. Uh, be safe. I know that we're still having spring storms here. I believe tonight we're still supposed to have some more. Um, I don't know. I haven't checked my Doppler. They start up in the, um, the San Angelo area and they come down. And when they come down, they just swoosh across all the little rivers and big rivers and stuff. And I know that up in the Fredericksburg area, which has got all the wineries, um, they were having flash flooding yesterday and uh, they had they have they just been opening up that area for people to go to the wineries and stuff and then they were flooding and I thought those people cannot get a break I can't get a break I want to go buy wine <laughs> I like their wine I want to go buy some more wine um, people used to laugh at me because uh, the um, uh, when my husband was an active minister uh, I would cook with wine and, and they would say, oh, you're buying wine? I said, I'm just cooking with it. But now that he's no longer an active minister, I've gone back to drinking it. So yes, I do drink wine. Of course, this is just a Coca-Cola. Excuse me, I was getting a little parched there. Um, see if there's anything else I was gonna tell you. Uh, I got the stand, the new fabrics, the dyed fabrics. Yep, that's about it. I hope y'all have a good day. I hope you have a good day stitching. No frogging. I wish everybody a no frogging day. So go for it. No frogging. So uh, I have been lucky here lately. Of course, now that I say that, I'm going to get hit with the, the frog big time. I've had no frogs here lately. At least, at least nothing more than just say maybe four or five stitches. I get those stupid little knots every so often in the back of the fabric and you're all of a sudden you realize that there's something back there and you flip it over and sure enough you got one of those loop knots that you gotta go pick out. But um, I have been, been good here lately. I haven't had to really take out a lot. When I tell my mother I've had to frog something, she gets so upset because she's like, no, you shouldn't have to take anything out. And I'm like, I have to take it out. So I did laugh. She does do a little bit of cross stitching and she had to frog something the other day and I laughed at her because she always tells me I just stitch around it. Well, she finally got to a point where she could not stitch around something and she had to take it out and it just killed her soul. And I just laughed at her because she's always saying she just, she just is not gonna frog. She's not gonna do it. And then she had to finally do it and I just laughed. I know that's a little sadistic, but it's one, it is what it is. You know, there's people who tell you, I just work around it. Well, she finally couldn't work around it. You know, those little trucks, well, when you got the, the wheel well for the wheel, they have to be a certain size so the wheel won't fit. Well, she wasn't paying attention and she made it too narrow and she said she was gonna have a little teeny wheel on one part and that wasn't gonna work. And I just, I laughed. I said, yep, that's what happens. Anyway, y'all have a good day. As I said, have a great day stitching, no frogs. And I will see y'all later. Bye.